You're listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast brought to you by DraftKings, America's number one sportsbook app. Now, joined by Jason Shear, I am merely Mike Luke. Hello, Jason. How are you doing? Splendid, Michael. How are you? I like the Wildcat behind you. The only thing missing is an A, but maybe we can work on that in a little bit. No worries. Oh, no. No way. Sorry. Keep All right. We're going to... We got a we got a lot to get here today. Um, we're gonna talk uh, we're gonna talk some Arizona basketball, some Arizona football, and some Arizona women's basketball too. But um, let's start. Uh, I guess let's start with Arizona. Let's start with Arizona football here. Um, news: Jerry Roberts will be uh, moving on. Um, wish him obviously the best of uh, luck. Um, this is a situation though where you know in college football it's a big time it's a big time entity, and you know uh, you got to try to put the best guys out on the field and. Uh, Jacob Manu, Justin Flo, they're not coming off the field. If Arizona gets Leviticus Sua, um, he's going to be playing a lot too. To me, it just kind of came down to a numbers game. Yeah, it, it's not a big concern. I mean, I, I think Jay Roberts is a great kid, but you know, there's a difference between a great kid and a great player. And I right. think for a role off the bench, as a you know, if he played sparingly, that would be okay. If he's playing 80 snaps a game, you probably have an issue. Like you mentioned, Manu flow, they lead for Sua. I assume now the you know, they're still in the in the picture for linebacker portal transfers to add depth, and it just kind of wasn't gonna be there for him. Yeah, and you know, that's just yeah, that's kind of what it comes down to. Now, let's talk a little bit about Leviticus Sua and what he would mean here. Um, he's gonna be announcing this month five or not five star, excuse me, uh, uh four star kid out of uh, California. Um, really looks the part could go to a lot of different places, but I feel that Arizona feels pretty comfortable about where they're at right now. Yeah, I think Arizona leads. You know, it, it would be uh, a surprise to me at this point if he didn't go to Arizona. But UCLA and Stanford are in there. I'm sure the new Stanford coaching staff has has put in work. UCLA doesn't really know what they're doing with their defensive coordinator right now. Um, you know, Arizona's recruited them harder than anyone. I, I don't think there's a team in the country that has recruited Sua harder than Arizona and he would come in and and start right away and landing a four-star kid from from modern day high school is a is a pretty big deal yeah and the thing about it with uh with uh, excuse me with uh with Sua is that there is playing time to be had here I mean there's not really a lot of spots on the defense that are spoken for and I think that's part of the recruiting pitch I mean look last year Jacob Manu by what week four never came out of the lineup again. I think that's going to be something that you can really sell with these guys because, I mean, we all saw the defense last year. They're looking to improve and they're looking to upgrade. Yeah, I mean, if there's one thing we learned about the defense last year is that Jed Fish has no issues playing the younger guys and would probably rather do it compared to the veterans that were kind of already on the roster when he came. And, and they have no issue playing freshmen. For all we know, Johnny Nansen's going to like the linebackers that he has and, and go with the three linebacker look. I mean, it's it's very possible if he has Manu, Flo, and Sua, and they like what they see, they just say, let's put them on at the field at the same time because that's our best defense. So there will be playing time available for him. He's playing right away as a freshman, barring some major disappointment, and and that's been one of the main pitches for Arizona. Yeah, and I was talking with uh, some people off the record, and they kind of told me the same thing about the defensive line. I mean, people are talking about Keon Bars and Paris Shan moving on. But Jacob Kangaika and Tai Tai Uyagalele were going to get the majority of those minutes at the defensive uh, at those defensive tackle positions, and that's not hating on a kid. That's nothing. That's just a fact of life that these this coaching staff loves those two freshmen, and they plan on playing them a great deal this coming year. Yeah, I mean those guys are going to play a, a ton. You know, they went out and added some portal guys, but Kangaika and, and Tai Tai are still the the two main guys. And look, at, at the end of the day. It, there's stuff beyond playing and, and fish clearly likes the attitude of the guys that he brought in versus maybe some of the attitudes of the guys that, you know, someone brought in. And it's not that they were bad attitudes. There's just a different perspective when you're a senior that's been through some rough spots versus a freshman when you're trying to turn a program around. And I think that's part of it also. And those guys are going to play. They added some portal up front and, and, you know, they're, they're kind of just rebuilding the entire defense. All right, now let's get to some Arizona basketball here. But first, have I told you about the four peaks? Not the four peaks on the court, the four peaks off the court. 
Please do. I could, I never get tired of hearing about it. All right. Here's the deal. So you can go up. Four Peaks is the official brew of PHNX Sports. You can go check it out at the Tempe location, or you can come to our tap and bottle watch parties and get Four Peaks as well. Fantastic stuff. Uh, they got all kinds of good deals and fun stuff up in the Tempe location. And the beer down here is fantastic. Four Peaks. Drink responsibly. Check show notes and link in the description. And more furniture. MORfurniture.com. Now, you might say to yourself, Mike, what's morfurniture.com? All right. Thanks for asking. Here's what you do. You go down and you can see you can get chairs and upholstery for anything and for any size and it comes at a great deal as well. morfurniture.com. Check it out. They redid the entire PHNX studios. It looks splendid. They can do the same thing for you. Okay. Speaking of the Arizona uh, speaking of Arizona basketball, one thing that I did have come to the realization of this year is, first of all, Arizona fans need to realize Arizona is still ranked ninth in the country. <laughs> Arizona doesn't suck. Arizona is still very good. Um, one thing, though, if Ballo and Tabellis are not playing well together, they become very mortal very quickly there, Jason. Yeah, I mean, it, Arizona puts a lot of pressure on its bigs to perform well. And, and really, it's Arizona's backcourt. And... What happens is if one of them isn't playing well, and what teams are doing is they're they're really choosing Umar. They're double teaming him. They're they're hitting him hard every time he touches the ball, putting him at the line, and it's going to be hard for for those guys to play well uh, together at every game. There's going to be games, and and when that happens, Arizona struggles, and they got to find a way to kind of get beyond that. You can't rely on on two guys, and when one of them doesn't play all that well, it just kind of all goes to goes to heck. Well, and I think the pro a little bit of the issue is on the perimeter, they're, they're, you're somewhat limited. And I think last year maybe we took you know Ben Mather and even Dalen Terry, you know, for uh, for granted to a certain extent. But you look on the perimeter. Not that any of these guys aren't good; they're all Power Five players. But Courtney Ramey has not been, I think, what a lot of people were hoping he was going to be. Pella Larson's a very good defender. Um, but he can't shoot or dribble and curse limited athletically. So that kind of limits per on the perimeter what you can do if you don't have Ballo and Tabellis taking care of business down low. Yeah, the, the clear issue with this team is the perimeter. There, there's absolutely no doubt about it. I mean, we're talking about whether or not Arizona suffers if Umar Ballo doesn't go for 15 and 10. And, right. and that's because the guards just aren't stepping up. You know, Courtney Ramey. I've I've gone to battle for him and and he's let me down every time. He's Cody just... James Martin has been calling this from day one. We do not like when Cody James Martin is right, but it does appear that he is trending in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, Ramey just has not been what we thought he was on on either side of the ball. Uh, Kirk Kreese is in a major slump. Kylan Boswell solid, but he's a true freshman. He's going to have games where he doesn't do anything. Um, you know, Adama Ball did not develop like we thought he would develop. We thought he would be a a serviceable player and, and he's not and the guards just aren't there they don't have the ability to beat guys off dribble and when teams are slow in arizona down as we've seen the last few games i mean it, it's just it's it's pretty ugly and and i think a part of what happening is they're all slumping at the same time i don't think they're actually this bad they have the worst right. effective field goal percentage in the conference right now it's historically bad i don't think that'll stay but this is what happens when you have guards that are slumping or not very good and and teams are kind of playing off that all right as you list to bellis though we have got to give all the kudos in the world to he has been i mean there were a lot of questions about how is zoo going to bounce back from his you know from a tough ncaa tournament and jason i don't care who else is out there this is a first team all american we're watching right there he is bringing it game in and game out and it doesn't really matter the competition you can essentially put zoo down for 20 and 10 every single game yeah, I mean, he's he's already got like I'm I'm looking at his numbers because he's he's averaging 29 two assists and 57 percent from the field. Yeah, like I mean, come on, if he doesn't make first team All American, assuming he keeps this up, it's a joke. He's clearly the best player in the Pac-12 this season. I mean, the jump that he's taken is is impressive, and that's the development with Tommy Lloyd that we were talking about. But he he's become the focal point of opposing defenses, and he's still putting up numbers he is a, a very very good basketball player and, and deserves credit for that jump he made and how he approached 
the performance in the tournament last year. Well, right. And the thing about it too, for, and it's also impressive because it's not like he's an overwhelming physical specimen that, you know, you just step out there and you know that you're going to get a certain amount of points. He really does beat you with skill, with craft around the hoop. And I'm going to ask you this. Uh -oh. Is there a spot for a Julius Tabellus in the NBA? I think it depends on the system. I, I, I think if, if you're in a, a free flowing offensive get up and like, I almost think he'd be good on like I know this sounds so like a Golden State Warriors type of offense. That's just what Matt Matt Muehlbach texted me that last night. The exact thing. Great minds think alike, Sheer. Because they're running up, he can get out in transition. He's one of the best running big men I've ever seen. But if you're right. if you're in a half court offense and he's going against NBA guys, it's tough. But I think if you get him in the right offense, like a Warriors type of offense, he could absolutely play in the NBA. And I'm saying this for selfish reasons, but I do believe that there's a very good chance that uh, Umar Ballo comes back next season. The reason that I think that is, first of all, I don't think there's a market for him in the NBA. Um, I love, and keep in mind, I love Umar Ballo. I would take nine straight years of Umar Ballo starting. But you look at the NBA the way it is now, and he's had some issues finishing around the hoop, around length. That just really isn't his game. I imagine he gets a nice little NIL, comes back. I think we could very well see Umar back here next year. Yeah, I don't think it's a lock that he goes to the NBA at all. Uh, I mean, it's let's call it 50-50, but he's very close with Tommy Lloyd and this coaching staff. He loves college. I don't think he's in a rush. Um, you know, it, it's it's a matter of what kind of money is going to be there now and what kind of money is going to be there in a year. And if it's similar or it's better in a year, I think he comes back to college. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about Kylan Boswell because he has been a very, he's been overall a bright spot emerging right here. But two things the DraftKings Sportsbook app. What's the code word? PHNX. I'm already PHNX. Bored. All right. Here's the deal. Last year, don't take what I'm going to say for at face value as far as my picks, but I would say right now, bet against the Suns on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. I told you earlier in the year to bet for the Suns. I've uh, single-handedly turned them into a terrible team. Go the other way. But here's the deal. If you put down five bucks, you can get $200 in free plays if that team wins. That simple. $500 or, or $200 in free plays. And, uh, oh, Shelby just liked something that I tweeted. Very good work there, Shelby. Um, <laughs> but uh, 21 and up, Arizona only. Gambling issue, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. They'll get you all taken care of. Um, but again, check out the show notes and the link in the description. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook app and Tap and Bottle. The tap and Bottle watch parties. Now, let's just say that this coming week, you're like, yeah, I'd like to go root against uh, uh, whoever Arizona's playing since they're on the road. Tap and Bottle is here for you. Come down to the Tap and Bottle watch parties downtown. We can root against Arizona or we root against Oregon, <laughs> who got a big win right there uh, this past against Utah, which I did not see coming. But again, check them out downtown, tap and bottle watch parties, all kinds of good fun. All right. Kylan Boswell, I must admit, when I first saw him, because I didn't watch him much in high school, um, I was like, this isn't what a five-star point guard generally looks like. Um, and he started out slow. There's no doubt about it. But as the Nostra Tho or Nostra Thomas, Tommy Lloyd, as he's dubbed himself over the Tommy gun, I guess, um, he... He is. He said that you know by about you know January he really expects him to be an issue, and you can see too what uh, Lloyd sees in him. He's quick. He understands the game. Not sure what kind of a shooter he is, but he's going to be a big part of uh, Arizona's uh, Arizona's plan going forward. Yeah, I mean they're they're thrilled with him, but you know he's still a true freshman. He's going to be inconsistent, but you know you saw his potential a few games ago when he went for nine, six, and six. I, I mean he is a very capable point guard the shooting is off and on he he from what i remember seeing him in high school he's a better shooter than he has shown so far this season i think that'll come around but he's clearly a, a major part of this offense whenever you talk to the coaching staff they're quick to remind you that he should have been a member of the 2023 class right and he came to arizona basically to get surgery and, and rehab and um, he's bounced back from that nicely and it, we're kind of trending towards him being, you know, a, a vital part of this offense off the bench because Arizona needs that type of guard. Um, Jacob says, who do you think will be the freshman and player of the week in the conference? Um, I'm not sure about player of the week, but if you're asking me the player of the year, it should be a Julius Tabellis and the freshman of the year. Hmm. I, I have a vote, Mike. 
And oh, that's oh, come on. Talk about a humble brag right there. <laughs> Who will you vote for, Jason Shear? There's like no freshman. It's it's awful. Uh, Adam Bone is going to win it because there's no one else. Right. I think yeah, and only, he there only in fact just to highlight it, there were only two nominees for freshman player of the week this week because no one has them. Really? Who who is the other freshman? It was Bona and I don't remember. It was a dude that averaged like he scored six points. All right, yeah. Well, he stinks then. <laughs> um, now let's talk about Arizona going forward into Oregon. I expect or I actually watched Oregon State against a Colorado, mainly because Mulebach was on the call, but that was the only reason. Oregon State is awful. Um, Arizona should absolutely destroy Oregon state. I don't care if they're playing on the moon. Um, Oregon is, I mean, who, who knows again, they haven't looked good all year, but at the same time, they also beat fairly easily a Utah team that was undefeated in conference at home. So Oregon's the one game that you, you look at and you're like, all right, that's a game that could be interesting. I think Oregon and Colorado are the two, like, what are we getting teams? Right. In the it's like you just don't know. You could get bad Oregon or you could get good Oregon. And good Oregon is a legitimately good team. Yeah. <laughs> bad Oregon is an awful team. It really matters like if they're shooting threes. Against Utah, they shot their threes well, and it's not a coincidence that led to the win. Against Colorado, they couldn't hit anything whatsoever, and they got blown out. It's We just don't know. We know Oregon State is going to get overwhelmed. Arizona should absolutely beat Oregon State by like 15 points. Oregon is the one where we just don't know what Oregon team we're getting. It's going to be fascinating to watch Ballo against Dante because those are two, I think the three best big men in the conference, and tell me if I'm forgetting somebody, are um, Arizona's two peaks, obviously, and in Folly Dante. I think those are the two best, or the three best bigs in the conference. That's going to be an interesting matchup right there um, to see both of them because they're different players, but they're both really good. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, I mean, Dante's a, a big dude. They're They're different players, like you mentioned. Um, you know, but again, like the, the issue is when you have that matchup, who guards Julius Tubelis? Like right. Oregon doesn't necessarily have the guy. And that's Quincy Garrier does not cut it. <laughs> and is that's that what, what you a lot of teams are running into is that, yeah, we're going to guard Ballo, but we're just going to, and Washington State was cool with it. They said, you know what? Julius is going to get 30. That's fine. We're just going to make Umar's life miserable. And that's what they did. You know, the national media likes beating up on the Pac 12 a lot, but I'm going to sit here and say this. UCLA and Arizona are locks to make the NCAA tournament. After that, I hate saying this, but ASU is an NCAA tournament team. Um, Utah appears to be an NCAA tournament team. Colorado, I mean, there is this the pack could get in five or six teams this year. Yeah, the issue is that they have two. We, we've seen this before. There's two teams that are locks in Arizona and UCLA. And then what's going to happen is the Pac-12 is going to eat itself and, and only two teams will make it. Right. Because it's going to be like the third team is, you know, ASU is very capable of getting in. They'll have some bad loss coming up where it ruins them near the end of the season. Same right. with Colorado and, and all that. Technically speaking, if everything plays out the way it should, yeah, I mean, the Pac-12 could get five teams in. I noticed in this last game, Tommy Lloyd calling some timeouts a little bit earlier than he was. Do you, uh, what do you attribute that to Jason Shear? Did they work? Uh, not really. <laughs> no, I think he did it to, he did it to shut people up. Now it's, it's a, it's a gut thing. You know, it, it just, that's what it comes down to. And, you know, it's funny because he called the timeouts and then he probably wished he would have had one to get zoo back on the court with, you know, when they mm -hmm. cut the lead down to five, he took them out for offense, defense, and they didn't have the time out to burn. They couldn't do it. And it, it was tough there. And so, um, you know, it's a situation where it, it's gut feeling and, and it didn't work great. And who knows if he didn't call the timeouts, it could have been worse. It's I, I get both points of view. All point. right. But you did say, you did say, tell me though, that you would have called the timeout against ASU. I probably would have. Yeah. All right, there, there we go. As long as Jason Shear is on board with that, I'm cool with this. Now, um, uh, one thing that I want to tell people, though, and I, I get people all the time that'll say something to the effect of, well, um, you know, Arizona's got all these flaws. They're not going anywhere in the tournament. I think your guy smirks on the board made a very good point where he said, you know, I can see that uh, I can see Arizona getting bounced early or making some real damage come March. Here's the, because here's the thing. Everybody's flawed. Now, if you were to ask me going into the NCAA tournament, if I have to have just one team, I'm taking Houston, 
But at the same point, though, Houston struggles to score at times. There's been games where they've really struggled to put it in the basket. People talk up UCLA. You got to remember, UCLA escaped by one the previous week against Washington State as well. Has another bad loss. Nobody out there, there isn't that dominating Duke Kentucky team where everyone's like, oh man, you don't want to come across them. Again, I think Houston would be the one I would pick and they're a terrible matchup for Arizona, but you know, I mean, look around the landscape of college basketball. They're in a great team. All of them are flawed. I think we're headed towards a ridiculous NCAA tournament. Yeah. I really do. I, I, because there's no team. Like you mentioned, it's, it is wide open. I don't think there's a big gap from, the 25th team in the country to the 10th team in the country. I, I think we're going to see quite a few upsets in the tournament. It's all matchup based too. And I say this every year, if Arizona plays a team that is deficient offensively in the NCAA tournament, that team's going to be in trouble. If they right. play a Houston or a TCU, Arizona is going to be in trouble. It all depends on the matchup and who's playing well then, because, you know, I could always point back to North Carolina last year. They weren't even supposed to make the tournament at one point. Then they got hot and, and they're in the title game. I mean, it, it things happen. It, it's just, it's, you can't predict in January based on a performance, what's going to happen in March. It just doesn't work that way. All right. Arizona plays Duke next year. Will you be going to this game? I think I am going. All right. Well, I'm going to be going as well, which that means that we get, to, I will request seats between Bruce. You, me oh, and Bruce, man. that's what's going to happen. But let's just say to your, um, let's just say to you, uh, you're, but you're wondering, man, you're like, man, how can I get tickets to that game to go watch Sheer and Micah bother Bruce? Not the game. And here's what you would do. You'd go to Game Time. Game Time is the best ticketing app out there. You can get 60% off many times. Concerts, shows, you name it. Game Time has got it. We've had people on the post-game show talk about how clutch Game Time is as well. Give it a look. Game Time, um, again, it's great for procrastinators. It's great for everything out there. And lastly, Mountain Mike's Pizza. Have you been to Mountain Mike's Pizza this year? I haven't yet, but I will be soon. All right. It's very, very good. Check it out. Mountain Mike's Pizza. It's on Oracle and Wetmore. Great pizza. Great environment. Lots of TVs. Uh, just go there and check it out. And you can check out Mountain Mike's Pizza at our Tap and Bottle Watch Parties. Again, Mountain Mike's. Okay. Now, Jacob J says, do you, support, do you guys support the rumor that the tournament could expand to 90 or so teams? No, I don't. I, I think 68 is more than enough. If you're not one of the 68, sorry, Seth Greenberg. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think it'll happen either. It just that's one of the things that they're pretty set on. I, I'd be really surprised if that happens. All right, now let's talk recruiting here before we're going to get to a little of Arizona women's basketball as well. But let's talk recruiting. Um, so obviously, Jamari Phillips uh, is in the bag for 2024. And well, you know what I mean in the bag. He's not getting paid, but whatever. Um, yeah, I know. Carter, Carter Bryant. Um, Arizona stands very, very well with them, but I'm getting a lot of people asking about 2023, what kind of reinforcements, obviously you got KJ Lewis coming in. Um, Arizona has got to get more athletic on the perimeter, a little bit more dynamic. Are there options out there right now, or is this going to be more of a grad transfer type or a portal type thing? I mean, the, the biggest tra guy target right now is Thierry Darlin, international player. It's probably Arizona or the G League. Some of the rumors, he played in Vegas a couple weeks ago. I think some of the rumors were G League. Arizona is still trying. He would fix that wing issue in a heartbeat. He is an right. NBA player. He would probably be a one and done if he if he meets, his, meets the hype. And then after that, um, there really isn't any high school guys. There's there's some international guys Arizona's on that, uh, that are going to be secret. But there's no mm -hmm. high school guys out there. Probably, you know, Darlin would be the the most notable name that Arizona fans know of. Okay. And then in 2024, obviously we mentioned Carter Bryant. We've talked about Jamari Phillips. Derek Queen's a guy out of uh, uh, out of the East Coast uh, that people have been talking about. Um, Arizona doesn't seem to lead, but it does seem like they have the they like the or that they're certainly in the they're certainly in the game. I'll put it to you like that. Uh, I I would. There, we had an article this morning. I can't believe. You don't read our website, Michael. Well, I've been locked out on my phone, as you've known. <laughs> All right, what did Derek, you say about Derek Queen? On by uh, the way, Derek, what website? What website? Where can they? Wildcatauthority.com. Uh, Arizona slowed down on him. I, I okay. don't see him as a priority recruit. I, I think he's probably going to Maryland. There's some other schools in there, but he he won't be coming to Arizona. Arizona slowed down quite a bit with him. The big men next year are interesting because let's just say, for example, that Tabellus leaves. Um, you have Ballo, you have Vasar. You have Dylan Anderson as well. 
But there would also probably be another big man. Uh, there'd probably be another big man that they could pick up there at some point. I don't know who that would be, but there would certainly be an opening there. Yeah, and and I think that guards. <laughs> this sounds maybe weird, but I think Tommy Lloyd probably prefers American guards and international big men. Okay, if that makes sense. And I'm not saying he doesn't like international guards, but when you look at the big men that he's recruited, there's a certain type of style that they play, and it's not as easily found in America and big men in America lately. Anyway, in the last few years, it's, it's just different. They, they're not as good. They're not as prominent. There's not as many of them. Meanwhile, international, you can go and get a guy like Henry Vesar who may not be ready right away, but we all know how good he's going to be next year and in the following year. Speaking of guys that we all know how good he's going to be next year, big Dylan's playing next year, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. Mm -hmm. What do you expect out of Dylan? I mean, it depends who else is on the roster too, but he's he's looked good in the in the minutes that he's had. There's just not a lot of minutes right now, but um, again, like I credit him for coming in and, and buying completely into what Tommy Lloyd has has coached him up to do, and and I think he probably has a bright future. All right, let's talk a little bit of Arizona women's basketball. All right, Cats have a big week, and again, I had actually I'll be honest with you, I had uh, tuned out of the Oregon State game, and then. Oh crap! They came back and they won, and they turn uh, played a great game against Oregon as well. This is a team that um, they're not they're not elite because again, there's about three or four teams that are elite, but they're kind of in that next tier where they're flawed, but they're pretty good. This is clearly a top fifteen team, Jason Shear. Yeah, I mean, women's basketball is different. There's clearly South Carolina and Stanford are very clearly the top teams in the country. And uh, but with Arizona, I mean, yeah, they're they're a solid team. That that was a big, even though it was at home, the beating Oregon. Oregon's a good team. Oregon State, the way they beat Oregon State by coming back, that's a, a nice win. And yeah, they're they're top fifteen. I think they're fourteenth in the poll today. That's probably right. Um, but they're another one of these teams where if the offense is clicking and playing well, they're really good. It's when that offense kind of slows down a bit where they they run into trouble. You know, is it Dia Barnes? And Sean Miller, a good comparison right here. And that, and again, I'm not dissing on Sean Miller because he won a lot of games here at the U of A. Um, great recruiter, great defense, a uh, little bit of a questionable offensive set. But at the same time, you know what the kind of talent and what the kind of structure they have, that they're always going to win and they're going to be capable of breaking through, as we've seen with Adia. Yeah, I think it's fair. I, I think they run similar sets and styles as well. And, and, Adia prides herself on defense. Sean did as well. And, um, you know, on the days where the offense doesn't show up, usually the defense will give them a chance to win. And it's same with Sean's Arizona's teams. I, it's a pretty fair comparison. I don't mind it. All right. Let me ask you, Light. Let me ask you this. In the next five years, does Arizona women's basketball make a Final Four? I'd say, yeah. I would as well. I would as well. You know, because that's, again, you follow the recruiting game very closely. It's all about getting the talent in there. And she's bringing in talent that, you know, when you're bringing in top 15 class, she's also got a point guard coming in next year in Jada Williams, who it's going to be interesting because she's actually more highly acclaimed than any player that Tommy Lloyd has brought in. And that's not a diss on Tommy Lloyd's guys. It's that she's got an NIL. LeBron's been at her game. And as we saw with uh, Miller as well, when you got TJ McConnell, when you got a point guard back there, it makes things easier. Yeah. I mean, she's bringing in a ton of talent. And if you believe that she's a good coach, which we do, then they should be making a final four because when you bring in that much talent and you're a good coach, good things are, are bound to happen. Mm -hmm. All right, Sheer. Again, where can they find you? Where can they get all the good stuff? Uh, Wildcatauthority.com. And then on Twitter, it's at Jason Shear. All right. He's Jason Shear. I'm Mike Luke. Be back with you tomorrow. As always, appreciate you, Shear. Appreciate all the comments. We'll talk with you soon. You've been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast.